Hi, my name is Dr. Rudraman and through the Oral Health Channel today we are going to be talking about thalassemia and its dental concentrations. Let's start. So today I'm going to be talking about a blood related disorder that is known as thalassemia where the hemoglobin because of its alpha and beta chains and some sort of mutation in the genes there is some sort of uh, defect in the functionality of the hemoglobin pigment which is responsible for the transport of oxygen and nutrients to different parts of the body through the help of RBCs. Now if I have to be very honest thalassemia is of various types you have uh, you know because of the alpha and beta and various types of the genetic type of uh, you know makeups in the mutations you have in, in broad sense you have thalassemia major minor and thalassemia intermedia basically if we talk about patients to be very honest uh, the biggest problem that comes with thalassemia patients is the lack of oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin because of which they are anemic in their typical sense however in this most severe form of any uh, you know thalassemia this can be life threatening and also sometimes the fetus can die in the womb because of the most severe kind of thalassemia present usually if it's a minor form of thalassemia it's known as a minor trait uh, minor or thalassemia trait and usually the patients uh, come up with something like you know minor anemic kind of things however if you talk about the symptoms they have a loss of appetite they feel fatigued also they have liver and you know, jaundice related problems and splenic problems uh, they have uh, susceptibility towards bone fracture and they have very typical features when it comes to uh, the bone hyperplasia because of the fact that the hemoglobin is kind of functionally compromised there is compensatory hyperplasia of the bone marrow that means the bone marrow produces much more cells than usual in order to compensate for the lack of oxygen and that's why the bone marrow is slightly hollow and it's slightly bigger now that comes to the dental aspect about it it's very simple because of the fact that the dental uh, the bone marrow uh, cavities are bigger because of the compensatory hyperplasia they have typical dental features needless to say before that if the anemia is severe they would require very repetitive blood transfusions due to which their iron overload might be a way bit too much and that can cause them to be susceptible to heart attacks irregular heartbeats and even death by heart failure so coming to uh, the features of thalassemic patients they have skeletal malocclusions they have malocclusions their bone marrow is hollower it's wider they have anterior spacing between teeth their gums are very specifically colored on top of that they have their orbits which are slightly displaced and they have something known as Brody's face which is basically the lower jaw just gets encompassed into the upper jaw as a bite on top of that they are more susceptible to dental decay they have a lack of salivary secretions and also they have more tooth loss compared to their non-thalassemic controls when it comes to patients it's very important that you need to know what kind of thalassemia you're going under you have to have all your blood tests ready if you want to get any dental procedure done also as a dentist you have to assess what is the type of thalassemia when was the last transfusion what are the lft kft and all those kinds of blood parameters that are required even bleeding time and coagulation time on top of that you need to make sure that you are choosing your um, you know medications very wisely metronidazole is not advised uh, erythromycin uh, estolate is not advised paracetamol is relatively safe also you need to know when the blood transfusion has happened because you need to do most of the procedures under antibiotic cover so and this procedure after the medical clearance from the thalassemia uh, you know the, the hematology department you can get uh, after just after the uh, blood transfusion you can do it under antibiotic coverage and you need to make sure that you avoid any sort of invasive long-standing procedures that might be a threat to any sort of you know blood vitals and all those things so this was today's episode please like share subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates if you want to get in touch with me here are my social media handles and my whatsapp number kindly refrain from calling directly as i might be busy with patients and if you have any queries doubts apprehensions and insights please feel free to put them into comment section so that's it for today thank you